Welcome to another Melbourne Cocoa Heads presentation, recorded August the 11th, 2011. In this session, Sadat Rahman talks about the IBA Forms framework and how it can be used to simplify the development of data entry apps for iPhone. So, if you've already seen the REA app, um, so this is the uh, easy reach app that I worked on at Deloitte Online, so which also uses IBA Forms extensively. And recently, the Play App app, which has just been approved, also makes some use of IBA Forms, um, as you'll see. Uh, just quickly, so part one of the presentation, I'm just going to talk about, just go through the apps, um, part two, building blocks, some Cocoa fundamentals that relate to IBA forms, so it's not all magic, so explain how it's all put together, um, and then how you go about building an IBA forms based app, and some resources. So you guys have already seen this, so I'm going to skip over it quickly. So this is the Play App app, which also again uses the IBA Forms library for um, the form over there. <laughs> so the Easy Reach app is what I'm going to focus on for now. Um, so it's the iPhone app that um, we built for Deloitte Online's largest client, SAGov. Um, the idea behind it is to manage your vehicle registrations. So basically pay for it. It's cool. Um, pay for it just via the iPhone app. Um, check your uh, rego details when it's about to expire. Um, and also basically find, uh, also track your payment historicals and also locate, you know, this is this uh, is probably not using IBA forms, but uh, also locate um, service SA outlets uh, nearby. Um, yeah. So just to give you a bit of, you know, spill on the marketing behind it. So at one stage it was new and noteworthy and then it turned up to be a stuff favorite. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how many people will be using this in um, Adelaide. <laughs> I've just no idea. So, and also it's been nominated for a Moby Award. So there's two fundamental functions. One is renew ratio and the other one is check ratio, which I'll show you later. So the first screen, you've got a choice. Um, you can um, scan your bill. So this actually launches a barcode scanner where you just basically, you've got the paper form in front of you, you take a snapshot of it, and it, just, and it basically figures out the client number, which is actually the rego number and the plate number from the barcode that's uh, on the paper form. <coughs> and away it goes, so it then hits the server, um, and the server tells you that, you know, this is, um, actually it should be, so this, is basically tells you your details, vehicle details like plate number, or what, what type of plate it is. So this is all fetched remotely. So, and then you basically use IBA form. Or, I mean, the library is used to sort of go between the different inputs. For example, here you want to select like how many months renewal you want to do. So, and again, all that data um, is fetched dynamically from the web. So it's not hard coded. So everything is sort of dynamic. Um, so you go. So you say you select. Um, three months, for example, and then you go continue, um, and then it goes to, this is where you put in your credit card, and yeah, again, all of that, see, including the uh, static view over there, that's also using IBA forms, and also this view over here, so, and at the moment, I think, there's, there's basically basic validation that's outside of IBA forms, so, Actually, it's something you have to implement yourself at the moment, but there are plans, I believe, to put that validation fra framework within IBA forms um, so that you, it, it's all out of the box. So after you process, you might, you know, it might you know, be in a dodgy network connection, so you get either of those screens, and finally, if you're, you know, if you're lucky, you'll probably get, oops, missed the screen there. Um, so your final screen would be the, you know, your payment, uh, receipt number, followed by the ability to add a reminder to your calendar. Uh, and this is the other function that I was talking about, is check rego. So check rego is very straightforward. You type in, you put in your plate number and um, select um, an option. Uh, what what Because you sometimes um, a single plate number can have different vehicles registered to it. It's, I don't know how that works. It's their sort of rules over there. Um, and then it comes back with the results. 
or if there's no results, the server will tell you that we couldn't find any results. So I just want to show you then, again, all of that multi-line stuff. And this is the part where IBA forms, we, I had to hack myself. Yeah, so the whole idea is, as Sean said, you, you basically purely abstract your data model and you, you bind that to your table view. You don't go implementing you know, your standard table view delegates in one view controller. So the idea is to just keep your model and your controller and view completely separate and just so it's cleaner and easy to refactor and easy to maintain. Um, just to quickly ex um, talk about other libraries that were used. So obviously for the barcode scanning component, Zbar iPhone SDK, and I think there was a bit of a talk on the Cocoa Heads uh, group about the best barcode library to use. My experience showing that this was the best one after a lot of one week of experimentation with a vast number of different barcode scanning libraries. Uh, that's the free one, yes. But there was a, some sort of dispute against the license, I think. Uh, I can't remember what the license was exactly. G uh, it's LGPL. LGPL, yeah. Um, ASH request, I, I think many of you know about this wonderful um, HTTP request library, which apparently is about to be replaced by the one that Guala recently released, AF, AF networking, block based. Um, touch XML, okay, so the other thing was. This is a really ancient government system, so there was no way we could convince them to give us JSON. That was out of the question. So, um, the fact that we got some structured XML, oh, kind of lucky. <laughs> um, so I was happy about that. Um, and progress hardware, all the spinner control that you see. Um, uh, the last one, GH init for writing, you know, test cases. So we had to be very sort of, you know. We had to make sure that the, if there are any problems, we could isolate it down to the problem being on the server end, not on the client code. So we had to make sure you, you know, write new test cases for our model classes. Um, all right, so let's get into the technical details of how IBA Forms is put together. We've got your IBA Form View Controller here, which has a data source. Um, that data source is made up of sections. So, you know, the table view section that you see. So, essentially, those are the sections that we're talking about. And within each section, you've got, uh, you know, one or many IBA form fields, which are made up of form cell. Now, what this is saying is that IBA uh, form data source actually uh, implements the protocol UI table view data source. So, that's your data source implemented right there. And IBA form view controller also inherits from UI view controller. And also takes care of uh, the delegate implementing the delegate protocol. Um, just I'll show you a bit of code. Uh, so basically, I'll just quickly go through it. So you first create your section, um, then you can create a style. Um, with this is a lot of boilerplate stuff. So I normally you just probably create a category if it's common across everything. So if you, if this is common style that you're going to apply across all your forms, it's worthwhile just sort of creating a, you know refactoring as much of this out into a category method. Um, okay, so after you've got your section and your style applied to that section, you can then go about creating your form fields. And with form fields, you get access to the actual uh, field cell. So you can go right down to whether it's a text field, or whether it's a label field, and then you can set up uh, input traits. So you can make it a, you know, if you want it, you can make it a email address, or you can specify that it's a number pad. Um, and there you go, you can just go nuts with it. One thing I was going to say is that you can also apply style not only to the section level, you can apply style directly to each of the form uh, fields uh, if you want to be really sort of, you know, have attention to the de details. Um, just quickly, I'm not sure if that's any clearer. Uh, the form field is broken up into, you've got a button form field, which is mostly for doing actions like, you know, you want to submit, go to the next uh, form, or you want to launch a, um, you know, an action like, for example, use that to launch the uh, barcode scanner. Um, input requester form field is basically made up of three different types here: uh, date, pick list. I'll go into a bit more detail on the pick list. Um, text field form field is fairly straightforward. Label is the one where you can just sort of display static data. Um, Boolean is the switch. All right, so I just want to quickly go over how you set up, um, so to explain, you've seen the uh, pick list where you select the different plate types. Um, so this is how you probably set it up. So you've got your, first of all, you get your list of pick list items. 
So in this case, they, they are of type IBA pick list form option. So they're basically key value pairs encoded in there. And then you have to specify a transformer. I'll explain why that comes into play a little bit later. So the transformer allows you to, so user selects a display type, like a numeric field. And you need to use the transformer to transform that into a field that the backend system understands. So it's probably something like, you know, a coded value. So it's kind of like your select list in HTML forms, where you've got your, uh, you know, the key, key on the left hand side and your, uh, and your actual display in the middle. Um, so this is exactly what this is doing, but in Objective C land. So once you've got your transformer set up, you just specify your transformer there. Um, you specify the title that you want it to show, and what that macro is doing, it's basically just localizing that. So if you want to translate this app into um, a different language, you just go and you know, give, give the strings files to someone else and translate that. So that's just reading it out, out of the strings file. Um, in this case, I've specified the selection mode to be single, so I just want to pick a single item. All right, there's multiple support as well, so you can do multiple items. Um, and the list of options uh, is specified there, and then you basically add it to the section as, you, as normal. And then there's a bit of memory management stuff. So I wanted to go over how IBA forms is just put together, just with, um, using the Cocoa fundamentals like key value coding. Just quickly before I go do that. So you'll notice that with each, um, when you initialize a IBA form field, you specify a key path. So that key path is coming right out of your model classes. So basically you've got, so I've got a model class called vehicle, and vehicle has a property called plate type, um, color, the year was manufactured, or whatever, all the details there. So that's how we're, I'm binding my model classes to the UI, just using key value coding, which I'll explain now. So the idea behind key value coding is fairly simple. It's like you've all used NS Dictionary, I assume, and it's basically accessing a, um, your prop, um, you know, a variable with, rather than directly calling it by access a method or instance variable, you access it by a key name, by, by a string. So example, so this is how you normally do it, right? or if you prefer the uh, bracket approach. Um. <laughs> There's another way to do it using uh, KVC. So you just go specify value for key, um, and that'll give you the same answer. And for setting, same deal. So you specify a set value for key. So if, if the first attempt is to use the KVA um, C compliant um, getters and setters, which uh, is part of your property, if you don't have that, that um, set up, then you'll try to get the value directly. And if the value isn't defined, then you'll get an NS undefined key exception. So to avoid getting that exception, you can also override the value for undefined key. So, and you can pretty much, it's another way you can define your custom properties if you want. So key paths are one step above key value um, coding. So basically it's a way to traverse objects using dot separated keys. Say you've got an object and you've got relationships. So for example, I've got a registration object and that's got a vehicle attached to it. So I can get to the plate number of the vehicle by just using key value coding recursively. So if you want to use key path, then you need to substitute the so value for key with key path, likewise for when you want to set a value. So once you understand what KVC works, the next step is to understand how KVO works. So basically KVO comes out of the box. If you, if you inherit from NS object, you're getting that for free. It's a way to listen for changes within object property. So the way to do that is to use this method where you can specify who the observer is, what key path you're interested in listening for, and what kind of change you're interested in listening for. And you can also pass in a context. So you can pass in an object that you can sort of filter on. And if you want to stop listening for changes, you can just call remove observer or you can specify remove all observers. Or if, you don't, if you don't specify the key path, it'll remove all observers from that object. So uh, the one key thing is that 
there's one part where people sort of get to cold super and it leads to strange sort of bugs at times. So if you're, if you're not going to handle it, then you should let the super pass handle the call. Okay, so how many people have used NS value transformers in their app? Quite a few. Um, in Mac apps or in iPhone apps? <laughs> Mac. So mostly NS value transformers are used with Cocoa bindings. To, you know, if you use Cocoa bindings, you know how powerful it is. Um, and here, what Sean is doing is he's using NS value transformer in very similar to how Cocoa binding works um, to, to convert between one value type to another. And that comes in handy for IBA form, IBA pick list form field example. So what I've done, what I'm trying to show you guys is how the, um, the plate type mappings were implemented. And the reason I had to use a byte dictionary, dictionary is because I wanted to get a, access to, when I give it a um, value, I want to know what the key is. When I give it a key, I want to know what the value, value is. So, so this is sort of a, like a dictionary that is mapped both ways. So it knows about giving a key and know, it'll give you the value, it'll give it a value, it'll give you the key. And the reason that's uh, uh, useful is for this value transformer. So what it does is you're initializing, so it inherits from NS value transformer. It's got a, it holds on to a uh, property um, by, by directional mappings. Uh, once, you've, once you've set it, using, once you've initialized it, you can't uh, go and set it. So that's what the read only is for. Okay, so just to give you an example, and this is something you'll have to use whenever you are dealing with pick lists. So given, so given that example there, so with the pick list, I'm setting up a whole bunch of IBA pick list form options. So I wanted to transform that into a So I want to go from there to a single string. So this is so given a pick list form, I want to know what the actual key is. So here I use the bidirectional mappings uh, structure to find out the name of the uh, pick list form and then pass it in and it will tell me exactly what the key is. So and then I want to go the other way around. So with the pick list you have to implement both reverse transformation and forward transformation. Um, so, this what I want to talk about now is sort of how normally you'd go about sort of building an IBA form sort of base application. I recommend first you do your data modeling. So just get understand how your business, you know, how, how the different models are fitting together. Once you know that, you can sort of build up your UI, start binding the to the data, uh, the you know the model classes. And then you can start going about once you once you're happy with the UI, once you've you know reasonably you know you know it's it's looking okay. Don't focus too much on the attention to detail at that stage. Get that working, and then sort of you know focus. If it's a network-based app, start worrying about the you know network calls. So you probably have to handle that in your view controllers. And after that, you should probably write test cases for model classes if they contain complex logic. I think um, Stu would say that to everyone. <laughs> um, and then, you know, just iterate. So basically, once you've got a basic structure working, keep going through it. And, and finally, just quickly, so the IBA form is available on GitHub. Uh, there's now Google Groups. So if you have any problems with the library or any extensions or any, anything, <laughs> or jump on the Google Group and there's, I think there's a handful of people helping out. Sean has been very uh, kind. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll, and I'm happy to help out <laughs> if you have any questions there. Um, also, I recommend reading the Cocoa Design Patterns book. Um, that will give you a bit more understanding on how this library actually is put together as well. Um, that's it. Many thanks to Sadat for presenting this month. Thanks also to Intunity for hosting this month's event. If you would like to know more about Melbourne Cocoa Heads, visit us on the web at melbournecocoaheads.com or follow Melbourne Cocoa on Twitter.